For the first time, Elon Musk personally watched a Starship launch outside Mission Control, standing just meters away as Flight 11 roared to life. This mission marked a major leap, perfect hot staging, full engine performance, and a controlled dual splashdown. But why did Musk decide to witness this flight in person? What milestone made Flight 11 unlike any before it? Let's dive right in. The countdown began. Ten seconds of silence, then thunder. All 33 Raptor 5 three engines came alive in perfect synchronization, their roar shaking the Texas coast. The telemetry flashed one line that SpaceX engineers had waited years to see. 33 of 33 Raptors nominal. No leaks, no shutdowns, no anomalies. That single line meant SpaceX had achieved something that eluded them for over a decade. Total engine reliability on liftoff. For Elon Musk, that was personal. The Raptor engine is the heart of Starship, and each one is a piece of engineering so advanced that even NASA once doubted it could work at scale. But on Flight 11, it did. Perfectly. As the rocket passed Max-Q, the point of maximum aerodynamic stress, Musk stayed silent. In earlier tests, Starships had failed right here where the structure is pushed to its limits. This time, nothing broke. The vibrations smoothed out. Starship soared cleanly, carving its path through the sky. For the first time, SpaceX had full control, and Musk knew it. Then came the riskiest maneuver of the entire mission, hot staging. It's the instant when the first stage shuts down most of its engines while the second stage lights its own. All while still connected a violent, high-pressure event that could tear both stages apart in milliseconds if anything went wrong. At T plus 259, SpaceX executed it with surgical precision. 30 engines on Super Heavy shut down in sequence, leaving only three running. Then, ignition, six upper-stage Raptors lit up, pushing Starship free from its booster. The separation was clean, smooth, and perfectly timed. For SpaceX, this was monumental. Hot staging reduces mass, improves efficiency, and increases payload capacity by roughly 10%. But it also demands flawless coordination between two massive machines moving at thousands of kilometers per hour. And SpaceX pulled it off without a single hiccup. That's the exact moment Elon Musk came to see with his own eyes. The moment Starship stopped being an experimental prototype and became a functioning two-stage launch system. While the Starship continued its climb, the booster began its own performance, a carefully choreographed descent back to Earth. This wasn't just falling back, it was rehearsing the future. The booster relit 13 engines, the first stage of what SpaceX calls the V3 landing pattern. It's designed to simulate how the booster will one day be caught mid-air by the massive mechanical arms of the Mechazilla Tower. 13 engines roared, then dropped to five, then three, each transition precise, each metric nominal. Then, shut down. The Super Heavy touched down softly into the gulf, exactly on target. No explosion, no loss of control, just a clean splashdown. To outsiders, it looked routine. To engineers, it was proof that SpaceX had mastered controlled descent on the most powerful booster ever built. Flight 11's booster didn't fail. It trained, and it passed. Above Earth, Starship's second stage continued to fire flawlessly. Six Raptor engines maintained stable thrust for nearly nine minutes, longer than any Starship flight before it. When the engines finally shut down, the control room erupted, nominal orbital insertion. For the first time, Starship had reached orbit as planned, but the mission wasn't over. Next came the payload door test, deploying simulated Starlink 5 three satellites each representing the next generation of SpaceX's global internet network. The previous flight had small issues, minor resistance along the deployment rails. This time, every motion was smooth. The new mechanical system worked flawlessly, pushing out mock payloads at full efficiency. Each launch like this adds up to something bigger, a future where a single Starship can replace multiple Falcon 9 launches, saving cost, time, and energy. Flight 11 proved that future isn't just possible, it's ready. At T plus 37 minutes, as the ship coasted silently in orbit, 
SpaceX attempted something that had failed three times before, reigniting a Raptor engine in space. Why is this so critical? Because a rocket that can reignite on demand isn't limited to one mission. It can change orbits, deploy satellites across multiple paths, or even land on another planet and take off again. And on Flight 11, it finally worked. Raptor Engine 3 relit, not once, but three times, perfectly. No instability, no throttle drift, stable burn through all attempts. For SpaceX, that's more than a technical milestone. It's the foundation for reusability in deep space. The ship wasn't just proving its strength, it was proving its flexibility. 45 minutes later, Starship began its re-entry. This is the phase that has destroyed more prototypes than any other. At Mach 25, even stainless steel can melt. But this time, SpaceX came prepared. Each forward flap had been reinforced with upgraded heat tiles capable of withstanding over 1,400 degrees Celsius. The live camera feed showed plasma streaking across the hull as flaps shifted to maintain stability. Despite the heat, the telemetry remained stable. The flaps held. The ship's descent was controlled. Then came the final test, the landing burn. Three engines reignited in sequence. Starship has landed, the commentator confirmed as cheers erupted across Starbase. No explosions, no deviation, just precision. Starship had done it all. Launch, separation, orbit, relight, re-entry, and landing. In one flawless flight. When reporters asked Elon Musk why he decided to step outside for Flight 11, his answer was short but telling. Because this one matters. Flight 11 wasn't just a test. It was the culmination of thousands of iterations, design changes, and lessons from failure. It was the moment SpaceX proved that Starship had evolved from prototype to operational spacecraft. Inside SpaceX, this flight is already being called the final validation. Even engineers who've seen every failure since SN8 admitted this was different. This time, nothing broke, nothing failed, and everything worked exactly as designed. That's why Musk wanted to witness it with his own eyes. Because Flight 11 marked the end of testing and the beginning of production. Every milestone in rocketry history has that one flight where everything clicks. For Apollo, it was Saturn V's second mission. For SpaceX, it's Starship Flight 11. This was the first time all systems, engines, hot staging, payload deployment, re-entry, performed flawlessly. And more importantly, it showed the world that SpaceX's iterative approach works. While traditional aerospace firms rely on slow, risk-averse development, SpaceX thrives on rapid testing and constant redesign. Ten flights of trial and error led to this one, a flight that didn't just succeed, but validated the process itself. Flight 11's message is clear. Reliability is earned through failure, not avoided because of it. And for the first time, the world saw what that philosophy can achieve. So what's next after a flight like this? For SpaceX, the focus now shifts from proving capability to scaling operations. That means faster turnaround times, reusable Raptors certified for 20 flights, and starships rolling off the Star Factory line like aircraft, not rockets. NASA is watching closely. The success of Flight 11 directly impacts Artemis, the lunar program that depends on Starship's technology to land astronauts on the moon. And according to several internal reports, SpaceX is already assembling the first cargo Starship designed to refuel other ships in orbit, a crucial step toward Mars. If that's true, Flight 11 wasn't just another milestone. It was the rehearsal for humanity's next big leap. Every era of spaceflight has a moment when risk transforms into reliability. For SpaceX, that moment came with Flight 11. Seven key milestones, seven successes, 33-33 Raptors ignition, clean hot staging, controlled booster return, nominal orbital insertion, smooth payload deployment, successful Raptor relight, and a flawless re-entry and landing. No company has ever achieved that sequence in a single mission. That's why this wasn't just another flight. It was the moment SpaceX crossed the line between experimentation and mastery. Now, the only question left is, if this is what SpaceX can already do in 2025, what will the next generation of Starship accomplish? Leave your thoughts in the comments. Was Flight 11 the turning point we've all been waiting for? 
or just the beginning of something even bigger? And that's exactly why Starship Flight 11 marks a turning point. Proof that SpaceX has entered a new era of reliability and precision. This mission wasn't just about another launch. It was the moment Starship became fully operational, from ignition to landing, showing what's possible when innovation meets persistence. What this means is clear. We're witnessing the foundation of reusable spaceflight that will shape future Moon and Mars missions. And it's only the beginning. Flight 12 and the next Starship generation are already in motion. So what do you think this success means for the future of human space travel? Leave your thoughts below, hit like, and don't forget to subscribe to Space Hub and turn on notifications so you never miss the next breakthrough shaping our journey beyond Earth. This is Space Hub, bringing you real insight into the future of space.